Investigators in Chafee County are looking for a woman missing since last Sunday. Suzanne Morphew was reported missing by a neighbor who said she went for a bike ride and she never returned. A lady just disappearing like that? It's just very concerning. FBI agents and Chafee County deputies spent Friday through Sunday scouring a property near Salida for evidence. Nothing was found. Caution tape lines the property. You can also see construction equipment out there. I've got two nieces that don't know where their mom is. I'm prepared for the fact that there's not going to be a good ending in this. Barry Morphew posted this video on social media over the weekend. Please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you. Morphew gave several theories about what could have happened to his wife. He said there could have been an animal attack, an accident, or perhaps a run-in with someone she knew. Now, what he meant by that is anyone's guess. This case is going to be something more than, I think, a family-related case. That's just my gut instinct. The light bulb moment doesn't happen overnight. Today marks the culmination of thousands of hours. And today is a good day for Suzanne. As far as I'm concerned, today is all about Suzanne. Prosecutors will not say how Suzanne Morphew died. They do not know where her body is buried. But tonight, nearly a year to the day since she disappeared, they believe they know who killed her. Barry Morphew, the person Suzanne built a life with, had children with, who begged for her safe return, is now charged in her murder. Barry Morphew is in a holding cell in Chafee County. The DA says he isn't talking. Now everybody else in Salida is, and they have been since last Mother's Day when they heard a woman named Suzanne Morphew had gone for a bike ride and not come back. Denver 7 Sloan Dickey has our story. She was kind of quiet, actually. Friends of Suzanne Morphew. Super sweet, always. Granted a little bit of closure. When I got the news this morning, it was a, it was a good feeling that he was put behind bars. On Wednesday, the Chafee County Sheriff's Office arrested Barry Morphew, Suzanne's husband, on first-degree murder charges. Now that I think there's a little bit of answers, a little bit, there's still a lot of questions of what happened to her. Where is she? Why? Why would you do this? to someone that you've been with for so many years. Over the last year, search dogs, divers, and mountain search and rescue teams have combed the area around Poncha Springs where she went missing. Her body still hasn't been found. If you do something like this, eventually you're gonna get caught. Suzanne's husband, who just a week after her disappearance posted a video on social media pleading for her safe return. Please, we'll do whatever it takes to bring you back. We love you, we miss you, your girls need you, I love you. He's now facing charges of first degree murder, attempting to influence a public servant and tampering with evidence. I just cried. I pray for Susan every single day. That's one of my prayers and um, something's finally been answered today. The Chafee County Sheriff John Speezy said it was not one piece of evidence over the last year that led to his arrest, but an accumulation. Today is not the day for celebration, nor does it mark the end of this investigation. Rather, it's the next step in this very difficult yet very important journey as we seek justice for Suzanne and her family. Investigators conducted more than 100 search warrants, 400 interviews, and received more than 1,400 tips before making this arrest. The majority of people thought that he did it from the beginning. A tight-knit community going through a long year of searching and unanswered questions say this is a step forward. She wasn't here long enough to make very many friends. She's made a lot since she disappeared. Friends of Suzanne Morphew will place this bench downtown in Salida in her honor. Shine bright for Suzanne. Her story's far from over until she's found and taken home and proper burial and her family can rest and someone is actually charged with her murder. Then it'll be over. Now, community members say they will continue to search for her body so they can give her that burial. Investigators say that with this arrest, they hope that someone will start talking. Reporting live in Chafee County, Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. All right, Sloan, thank you. And Barry Morphew will be in court tomorrow morning. We could learn more information there. More likely, though, we'll have to wait until a preliminary hearing to see what the prosecution's case is based on. And the DA's office has no intention of releasing the affidavit anytime soon. And if Suzanne Morphew was indeed murdered by her husband, then she is the exception, not as a victim of domestic violence. That is all too common. But as someone whose circumstances attracted national attention. Domestic violence or intimate partner violence can occur in any household. 
in any neighborhood, um, regardless of um, you know, a person's economic status or their level of education. Abusive relationships do not always begin with physical violence. So if you're afraid of the person you're living with for any reason, if you worry they have too much control over your life, please do not hesitate to reach out for help. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is ready to take your call any time of the day. There are also plenty of local resources like the Rose Andam Center. The district attorney in Larimer County says he didn't have enough evidence to file hate crime charges against a man who held a CSU football player at gunpoint. Barry Wesley and another man crossed paths with Scott Goodmanson while working as door to door salesman last year. A Goodmanson said the two were Antifa, jammed a rifle into Wesley's back. When Wesley begged for his life, Goodmanson said he wouldn't kill him, but the police would. And like it was just so like powerful and scary or whatever emotion you want to use to describe it. And it, it just made you go like, what? Like what just happened? Wesley wanted bias motivated charges. Instead, Goodmudson took a plea deal, was convicted of felony menacing, and sentenced to four years probation. The Colorado House of Representatives erupted into shouts and finger pointing today after State Rep Richard Holtorf capped off a rambling speech like this. I'm getting there. Don't worry, Buckwheat. I'm getting there. I'm now, sorry. what I'd like to say, what I'd like to say, that's an endearing term, by the way. Please do not do that any further. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Holt, Why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling at me? We're going to be in a recess. Despite mention of Tom Sullivan, it was not immediately clear who Holtorf was referring to. And following a recess, Holtorf, who represents Eastern Plains, returned and said he was sorry if he, quote, offended anyone. An arrest has been made in the August murder of nine-month-old Gianna Rosales. Denver 7's Addie Guajardo sat down with the baby's father last year and met with him again today. Sometimes it takes time for the clouds to clear and the light to shine through. I just told her I was making her look pretty. For this young father to see the light and feel the love he once had. I love my daughter. Nine-month-old Gianna Rosales, known as Gigi, was Anthony's world. October 25th, 2019. A love filled with dedication and determination to find her killer. She died of blunt force injuries while in her mother's care. I love you, Mama's girl. Anthony shared his heartache exclusively with Denver 7 just days after she died last August. I remember when I held it for the first time. He rattled off the countless times he felt unheard when he expressed worry for his daughter's well-being, calling Child Protective Services and police multiple times asking for welfare checks. Denver Police Department, I reached out to Lakewood Police Department, I reached out to Reed Ridge Police Department. Police say they attempted multiple welfare checks. I'm just mad. Um, I feel like if a lot more people were to listen to me, then we'd be okay. But no one was listening. Now, nine months later, a sliver of peace pierced through the darkness. I felt uh, some type of relief. Denver police arrested 21-year-old Kane Gallardo and charged him with first-degree murder in connection with baby Gigi's death. Gallardo is the boyfriend of Gianna's mother. We just had a court today. Anthony attended the court hearing Wednesday where he says Gallardo was denied bail. You're going to rot. Justice is coming. Anthony's number one priority is making sure everyone involved in his daughter's death is held accountable and hopes to use her story to spark a change. Justice for Gigi stands on a lot more than just justice. He's we're trying to stop this from happening to any child. He wants police to take welfare check calls seriously and ensure that young parents, specifically fathers, are heard. Every time I said something, they try to clarify it as why it was okay. And none of this part was okay because a baby died. His baby, his little girl. We love you, Gigi. Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. A federal judge says the CDC was out of bounds when it declared a nationwide moratorium on evictions last summer. The Biden administration is expected to appeal. Jeff Engelstad, who served as director of the Colorado Association of Realtors and teaches at DU, says regardless of what happens in court, landlords will likely recognize it's often in their best interest to work with tenants. If they quit paying rent in March of last year and they haven't paid a dime of rent since, then man, I would probably agree they're probably a bad risk going forward. And so there's a tenant that you probably um, you know, would look to would look to get rid of. But if they've if they've been trying, 
Um, these are trying, you know, these have been trying times and we're not out of it yet. And if people have been working in kind of a heads up fashion, then I think it behooves everyone to work together, the landlord as well as the tenant. The moratorium is due to expire at the end of June and could remain in place while an appeal is argued. Children now account for more than 25% of the new COVID cases in Colorado. They make up 16% of all cases to date. The FDA is expected to authorize the use of the Pfizer vaccine for children between the ages of 12 and 15 within the next week or so. And vaccine clinics were set up at Cinco de Mayo celebrations in Monta Vista and Pueblo today. Another is planned for Friday at the Arkansas Valley Fairgrounds in Rocky Ford. We do not recommend celebrating Cinco de Mayo for three full days. We do recommend <laughs> you get the vaccine. We have some warmer weather on the way for the next couple of days, but also another big storm in the seven days. A Montana family has spent the last few months in Denver. It's just a lot. They aren't here by choice, but you made them feel right at home all the same. We'll have that story when we come back. Thank you, it's just never enough.